When I was 18, my cousin, let's call her Jade, decided to falsely accuse me of, of sexual assault. And unfortunately, my entire family bought the story. Jade is four years older than me and we used to be close when we were kids, but eventually we just grew apart. She is my uncle's daughter who happens to be a single father. My mom's younger brother, my uncle, got married to his ex-wife when they were really young because he got her pregnant. But she ended up cheating on him and that marriage ended within a couple of years. She tried to stay in touch with Jade for a few years, but eventually she moved away with her new boyfriend and since then they have not had any contact. My uncle was a respectable man and he was the kind of person who would struggle through everything on his own, but never accept help from anyone. He was a single father and it was kind of admirable how he had dedicated his entire life to raising his daughter. So much so that he never even got serious with anyone else after his divorce with his ex. Until Jade was 18, her father took care of everything and even had a college fund set aside for her. But after that, when she said that she wanted to continue studying, her father told her that he had done everything in his power to fund her education. But now she was going to have to be on her own because he had to look out for his own retirement as well. And I think that was a pretty fair way to deal with the situation because if she wanted to pursue higher studies, that should have been on her own dime and not her father's because by then she was definitely old enough to be working. But she did not agree with that and she believed that her dad should continue to fund her education for as long as she wants to study. And they had a lot of fights about it. As a result, she ended up spending a lot of time with my family because Every time that she would end up fighting with her father, she would come to my mom and vent to her. I personally thought that my uncle was being quite reasonable, but I never said anything about it because Jade would come over to speak to my mom and not me, so it was not my place to comment. Anyway, one day she came home unannounced like she usually did, and my parents were not home. I don't remember exactly where they were. They had probably gone out for a party, but I remember being the only person back home. So when she showed up, I instantly told her that my mother was not there and I thought that she would go away after that. But she decided to sit inside the living room because apparently she just needed some time away from her father because they had just gotten into yet another horrible fight. To be honest, I had heard enough about her fights with her father because she used to be very loud when she would come over to talk to my mother and I wasn't really interested in hearing it again. But since my mom was not there, she started venting to me about it and I think she was expecting me to be just as sympathetic towards her as my mother had been. But I had very different opinions on the situation. So when she started ranting about her father again, I cut her off and I told her that my mother might have fed into her delusions. But I thought that what my uncle was doing was perfectly reasonable. I told her that he had dedicated his entire life to raising her to be a competent and capable independent woman. So now it was her chance to prove him right. And if she really wanted to pursue a master's degree and then get a doctorate, she would have to do what everyone else does and pay for it all herself. She was also a STEM major. And I know that whatever job she would eventually find, it would be enough for her to support herself. All she had to do was at least try, but she just kept insisting that it would be just too much for her to handle and she couldn't work as well as study. So I told her that if she had already made up her mind that it was impossible for her to start working and continue her education, then maybe she should just give up on higher studies. But it was really unfair of her to demand that her father continue to pay for everything, especially after he had done so much for her. And instead of being grateful for it, she was acting like he was the villain here. 
I guess she hadn't expected that reality check. And as soon as I said all of this to her, she started yelling at me and told me that I was a horrible human being and that I would never understand what she was going through because I was a privileged brat and didn't even deserve to have the support that I did. If I'm being honest, I thought she was more of a privileged brat than I was, but whatever. She yelled at me for a couple of minutes and then ran out of the house crying. I did not go after her because, like I said, I was not interested in hearing her cry about the same thing over and over again. But I definitely had not expected what happened after that because the next day I got accused of sexual assault by her. And my entire world turned upside down because of that one accusation. And now, when people are finally finding out that she had lied about everything, my family is blowing up my phone after not having spoken to me for the past three years. Anyway, the day after Jade and I had that fight, my parents woke me up in the morning and I still remember everything as clearly as yesterday. Because... It was probably the most traumatizing day of my life. They woke me up saying that my uncle and Jade were there to see me and apparently it was very important. I had no idea what had happened by then, but once I came downstairs, Jade started screaming about how I had sexually assaulted her the previous night and started faking a breakdown. My uncle looked extremely disturbed and my parents were also very shocked. Since she was not in the condition to speak, at least she was pretending that she wasn't, my uncle was the one who did all the talking and he told my parents that when she had come back home that day, after she had fought with him, she had been crying relentlessly and eventually he had managed to actually get what had happened out of her. She had gone back home to her father and told him that apparently, since my parents were not at home, I had lured her in and then, well, done what she accused me of. He couldn't even look at me and my parents were also avoiding looking at me. I tried to protest and I tried to claim that I didn't do it, but nobody was listening to me. It was horrible because even though I hadn't done anything, People were already treating me like a criminal. Right in front of me, my parents started begging for forgiveness and told my uncle not to report me or to go public with this and said that they were ready to do anything that it took to fix the situation. No matter how hard I cried out, my parents and my uncle completely ignored my existence in the room and it got so frustrating the way they were ignoring me and talking to each other that I picked up a vase out of frustration and threw it at the wall just so they would pay attention to me but that kind of backfired because my dad lost his temper and grabbed me by the arm and dragged me to my room and then shut me inside I kept banging against the door until my fists and arms started hurting because there was no way I was going to let Jade get away with this. It was a huge lie to tell and it might have even ruined my reputation but unfortunately my dad did not let me out of the room until my uncle and Jade had left. When he finally opened the door I started crying immediately and I tried to tell them that I hadn't done anything of the sort but they told me that they had watched the security footage from the cameras outside our house and they knew that Jade had actually come over the previous evening and had run out of the house crying a couple of minutes later. And judging by the way she had run out crying, they had chosen to believe her. They said that Jade literally did not have any reason to lie about what had happened and told me that they were ashamed of the kind of son that they had raised. My mother was in tears and couldn't come out to say anything, but my dad told me that with every difficulty they had managed to get my uncle and Jade to promise that they were not going to take any sort of legal action against me. But this meant that they would also have to promise them something in return, and Jade and my uncle had demanded that I be sent far, far away so that she wouldn't have to see me around and relive the traumatic experience. So after a lot of discussion, my dad decided that he was going to send me away to live with my great uncle who lives in Iowa. 
He was the least liked family member because of his terrible attitude and anger issues. And my dad knew that I did not like him at all. But that was the place furthest away from my family. And my dad told me that this was the only solution. So now I just had to accept it. And not only were they going to send me away, but they had also told Jade that they were going to take away the college fund that they had set aside for me and give it all to her. Just so they would keep it all quiet. I tried to protest, but there was no talking to them. And eventually I gave up because I just didn't see the point of anything anymore, since even my own parents did not seem to trust me. I was also able to figure out that Jade had probably accused me falsely of such things simply because she wanted something to hold against my parents so that she could extract money from them because her own father would never accept help of any kind, especially financial, not even from his own family. Anyway, within a couple of days of that incident, I was all packed up and ready to leave and my parents did not even bother to hug me or wish me goodbye. For the next couple of days, my parents pretended that I was not even at home and I was under house arrest. So I couldn't even say goodbye to any of my friends. They had taken away my phone and told me that if I did not go off the grid and practically disappeared from everybody's life, they would go with themselves and then my life would be ruined. So I was forced to cut ties with everyone from my past and move away from everything that I knew all because of a lie that Jade had told. A couple of days after that incident, my great uncle showed up to pick me up and I was sent off to live with him in an exile of sorts. Since then, I have had no contact with anyone from my past, not my family and not my friends, and I've had to completely restart my life. When I first moved away with my great uncle, it was very difficult for me to adjust to his ways because he would constantly taunt me throughout the day, even though he didn't even know why I had been kicked out. But the fact that I had been kicked out was enough for him to hold it against me and constantly mock me about it. And I've already talked about how he had a terrible attitude and issues with anger. So I had to walk on eggshells around him. I knew that my parents were sending him money every month but he still pretended like he was doing me a huge favor by letting me stay with him. I knew that I wouldn't be able to live with him. And after the first few weeks, I decided that there was no point in crying over spilled milk. My parents had cut me off and I was forbidden from having any contact with anyone from my previous life. So all I could do was make the best of the situation and I decided to start applying for jobs. I couldn't go to college anyway. I knew that because even though I had been accepted into the college of my choice, I didn't have the money or the means to go there. So I started applying to jobs after a few weeks of moping around. And after a couple of interviews, I was finally able to get a job as a warehouse worker. It didn't pay much and I was miserable because of how physically draining the job was. But at least when I got my first salary, I was able to move out of my horrible great uncle's place. I was lucky enough to have a couple of co-workers around the same age as me, who were also struggling with money. We became close friends and three of us decided to pitch in and get an apartment together. So that's how I was able to move out of my great uncle's house. And I didn't even bother to tell him because I knew that for him, it would be a good riddance anyway. After I moved out from his place, I never heard from any of my family members again. For the past three years, I have been living with the same people that I got my first apartment with. And we have all been incredibly lucky because after working for a few months in the warehouse, all three of us decided to continue looking for better opportunities since we were always too physically exhausted. Over the past three years, we have changed a lot of jobs and have been putting aside money because all three of us want to go to college. They have also had their fair share of struggles, but that's not relevant. Anyway, right now I'm working in sales and I'm making a decent amount and I've been thinking about reapplying to colleges. As for my two friends, 
They are also doing well, and we have recently also moved into a bigger apartment in a much nicer neighborhood. But of course, now that things have started looking up for me, my family thinks that it's the perfect time to try and get back into my life. As I had said, I have had no contact with them for the past three years, so I was quite surprised when my dad reached out to me through email a few days back. I'm not active on any social media since that had been one of the rules that my parents had set when they kicked me out and I had been very paranoid about them spreading the story and ruining my reputation and life if I went against the rules so I had stuck to it. My email address has not changed in the past three years and I have never blocked them anywhere even though they have. Anyway I was very surprised to hear from him because after everything that happened I had genuinely not expected it. When I read the email, it was basically just an apology for everything that had happened over the past three years. And he wanted me to give him my address and contact info so that he could reach out to me properly. He had provided me with his own contact info as well, in case I wanted to reach out to him on my own time. The reason he was apologizing and trying to reach out to me in the first place at all was because Jade had finally realized that it was time that she told everyone the truth about what had really happened. She was on her deathbed and I guess she had finally developed a conscience or something. But for whatever reason, she had decided to tell her father the truth about what had happened and he had spoken to my parents. So after learning the truth, my parents decided to reach out to me once again. But coming on to what has happened with Jade, she's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and it's very unlikely that she's going to make it. She's been suffering for the past eight months and her condition is only deteriorating even though the treatment is still ongoing. And no, she wasn't even able to make good use of all the money that she received from my college fund after she screwed me over. She wasted it all away with her terrible life choices because instead of pursuing her master's degree, she decided to take a gap year with all that money and traveled the world so she could expand her horizons and truly find herself. She came back around a year and a half ago and she had already eaten away at more than half of her savings because she wanted to live luxuriously. So by the time she came back, she had very little money left and started asking my parents for more. But my uncle threatened to cut her off if she took any more money from my parents. So she was forced to give up on the idea of college because with whatever money she had left, she couldn't afford a master's degree without working. And that's not something that she wanted. But she still had some money left so she could have put it to good use and at least work to build more capital. However, I guess that year-long vacation had made her lazy and she was already pretty spoiled. So she went on to waste even more of her money by buying an apartment and continuing to live beyond her means, even though she still hadn't even started looking for a job. Finally, she was able to find a job about a year ago, but then she was diagnosed with cancer and had to quit. And now, she has had to sell the apartment and everything else that she bought because she needs the money. And I don't want to come off as insensitive, but after reading what had happened with her, I felt really great because she did not need any enemies since she herself was her own biggest enemy. Once I was done reading the email, I had to think about whether I wanted to get back in touch with my parents or not. And I decided to speak to my friends about it. This also meant that I finally had to tell them the truth about why I had been kicked out of my house by my parents. Because initially, I had only told them that we had had a bunch of disagreements and that's why they had kicked me out, but I hadn't told them the real reason. But after that email, I finally discussed it with my friends because I really didn't have anybody else to speak to about it. I told them everything about Jade and how she had lied and thrown me under the bus. And then I told them, all about my parents as well and how they had believed her over me. Not only had they kicked me out and sent me to live with the worst relative possible, but they had also forced me to cut everyone from my past off and had actually threatened to ruin my reputation themselves if I went against them. 
My friends could actually hardly believe what I was telling them while I was narrating everything to them. And after I was done, they told me that there was no way that they would get back in touch with my parents and forgive them if they were in my place. And I'm taking it seriously because it's coming from my closest friends and pretty much the only ones that I have at this point. I wouldn't have thought about it much if they had just told me not to get back in touch with my parents and just let it go. But they think that I should speak up about what happened to me because for the past three years, I have been living in fear, even though I haven't really done anything. They are right, to be honest. I have had to give up so much of my life because somebody told a lie about me and my parents went with it. So if I want to reclaim that, I need to speak up about what happened to me. But before doing that, I decided to tell my parents that I was going to go with the story and the real version of what happened because people deserve to know. And I don't really care if Jade is on her deathbed or whatever. She ruined my life. And now I'm going to reclaim it. So I texted the number that my dad had sent me and I told him whatever I was going to do because I already had the screenshots of the email that he had sent me confirming that Jade had been lying. So now I could post about it on social media and forget about posting. I could finally have a social media again. I wasn't asking him for permission, but I guess he misread the situation. And now he and my mother and even my uncle are blowing up my phone requesting me not to do this because Jade already has been through a lot and she is suffering like never before. So she has received her karma and I don't need to punish her even more. They want me not to go public with the truth because that's going to ruin her reputation. And they think that I can come back and return to everything that I left behind without telling people the truth about why I had left in the first place and nobody's going to question it. And they're right. I can't do that. But I don't really think that I want to because Jay took away a huge part of my life. And even my friends think that it's perfectly within reason for me to post the truth. It's not to get back at her. It's just so that people know what has happened. And I don't think that there are a lot of reasonable excuses to disappear from everybody's life for three years and then come back again. Besides, I don't even plan on going back to the city. I'm content enough here. But I do miss my friends and a lot of my relatives who were good to me. So I think at least they deserve to know the truth. My parents and my uncle have been blowing up my phone relentlessly, though, which is the only thing that has been stopping me from posting. Jade is apparently not in good shape at all, and they have been practically begging me not to post about anything. So, WIBTA, if I went ahead anyway and posted the truth about why I had had to leave everything behind for three years and expose my cousin, even though she's on her deathbed right now? Update one. I did it, guys. I thought about it for a really long time. I consulted my friends again and again repeatedly. And they told me the same thing. Jade and my family had taken away three years of my life that I could have spent normally. But I had to live in fear because of them, even though I hadn't actually done anything. It would be perfectly within reason for me to retaliate, regardless of what condition Jade was in. And a lot of comments here also believe the same thing. To be honest, at the end of the day, it was my own decision, but knowing that most people are going to back me up on this made me feel a lot better. It has been a week since my original post, and last night I put up my post narrating everything that has happened in my life and why exactly I had been off-grid and out of everybody's life for the past three years. Everyone who used to know me in the past, including my friends and relatives, have reached out to me to let me know that they are there for me and that they have missed me greatly for the past three years. I honestly believe it because I did receive a lot of emails from a lot of people in the first couple of months, but apparently after that, my parents told everyone not to go looking for me because I wanted to be left alone because I had been through something very traumatizing and I need time and space to heal. So after the first few months of no contact, People stopped trying to reach out to me because they wanted to give me my space. All my friends told me that they had asked my parents about my whereabouts several times. 
but they had never revealed it. So they couldn't get in touch with me. And even a lot of my relatives told me that they had waited patiently for me to surface again. It actually made me cry a little, seeing how nobody had forgotten me and how ready everyone was to welcome me back. Most importantly, people have said that they had always found Jade very shady, but that this was low even by her standards. My parents and my uncle have had nothing to say so far, and I'm hoping that they stay out because I really don't want to speak to them. As for myself, I feel a lot more free and lightweight now that all of this is off my chest. So speaking up about what had happened with me was a good choice and I don't regret anything. Update two. Hi, it has been a couple of days since I made that post and my parents reached out to me yesterday to let me know that they are really disappointed in me because they had only requested one thing that I let sleeping dogs lie and I come up with some excuse as to why I was missing for three years but not tell everyone the truth about what had happened because Jay deserves some peace and quiet given her condition. Apparently after my post she has lost pretty much all of her friends and not even anyone from the family is willing to speak to her anymore as if it's my fault. It was shocking that even now they care more about what Jade is going through than what their own son has been through in the past. An apology is never going to cut it. And I told them that I didn't care about their disappointment anymore. They had also let me down on multiple levels and now they had no right to expect anything from me. If Jade deserves some peace and quiet right now just because she's sick with cancer, I could also say the same thing about myself because... When they kicked me out and sent me to live with my horrible great uncle, I was just 18 and yet they had no sympathy or mercy for me. And at least I'm telling the truth. Jade had lied and she got away with it for three years. So now I'm going to reclaim my life and I'm not going to allow anyone to try and make me feel guilty about it. I told them never to contact me again and that the only people they should be disappointed in are themselves. Then I finally blocked them, something I should have done a really long time back. But I was scared and confused. However, I think speaking up about what has happened to me has given me a sense of closure. And now I don't feel the pressure to deal with my parents anymore. They and their expectations can take a hike for all I care. Update three. Hey, so I decided to finally visit my friends and family after three long years this weekend and it was pretty much the best decision I had ever made. I also took my roommates along with me for moral support more than anything else and to be honest they have also become so close that we're like brothers now and I wanted them to meet my friends as well. Everyone's been getting along great and my friends seem overjoyed to see me. I am actually even living with one of them right now because all of them got offended when I said that I was going to be staying in a hotel. I'm going to go back in a couple of days, but my heart is just so full of joy that I can't even explain it in words. My roommates and my old friends are all living together in one of my friend's houses, and we are having the time of our lives. I've also managed to meet quite a few of my relatives, and they've told me that they have cut off my parents my uncle and Jade and they don't plan on having anything to do with these people ever again and it makes me really happy that at the end of the day people always are going to take a stand for what is right. I'm glad that I'm surrounded by people like this who didn't forget me and love me more than my parents do. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.